All right, welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach, and this is Gloria, and today's Thursday, so we have a new theological term. Gloria, are you excited? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you dropped something. Are you excited? Nope. Don't. Don't? Okay, whatever that means. All right, Gloria, our word today is stewardship. Can you say stewardship? Stewardship is the careful use, control, and management of the possessions of another that have been entrusted to us. And from a biblical lens, that could mean our wealth, our possessions, and all these different things that God has given us. So the time that we have, the talents that he's given us, and the treasures that he's given us. So be sure to pause the video at any point to check out these verses that talk about how we are meant to be good stewards as, as Christians. So there are many instances of individuals acting as stewards in the Bible. We have Adam in the Garden of Eve, we have Joseph in Potiphar's household, and we have Daniel as the administrator in the Babylonian captivity. We have priests in the Old Testament serving as stewards of the tabernacle, and we also have the seven men who were chosen in Jerusalem to serve as deacons for the church. And we have Jesus teaching parables about accountability for stewards, the fact that all of them will be held accountable for the, for the gifts that God has given them and how they use them. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And Jesus also placed a special emphasis on an individual's responsibility as being a steward. So ultimately, to be a good steward is an honorable thing. And Christians have been called to be good stewards of the most precious thing because we have been entrusted with the stewardship of the gospel of God. And Christians are ultimately to be good stewards of their God-given gifts. We are meant to be good stewards by using our gifts to benefit others. We are meant to be good stewards by developing our gifts from God. And we are also meant to be good stewards of our bodies by taking care of them. And as Christians, we are meant to be stewards of our material possessions by using them to share with others when, in the event that that needs to take place and also to use them for God's glory in every aspect of our lives. So oftentimes I've heard that being a good steward means you know, valuing our time, our talent, and our treasure for God's glory. And so let's look at each individual one of those. So when we are honoring God with our time, that means, you know, we're not wasting time doing, you know, silly and ridiculous things, but we're using every bit of our time to God's glory and seeking to spread the gospel, to, to help those in need when, when, the, when the time comes, to be in prayer, to be reading God's word, memorizing it, studying it, and sharing that with others. And as parents, we are meant to be stewarding our children, raising them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, teaching them about God's word, and demonstrating God's word to them by sharing the gospel with them, and living out the truths of God's word. So living in obedience to God's word, because we know that apart from Christ, we can do nothing, but in Christ, we can do all things. Children are good stewards of their time by not simply playing games all the time or all these different things that, you know, are a waste of time ultimately, but studying God's word, growing in holiness and obedience and respect and honor of our parents and other authorities in our lives and seeking to live for God's glory in every aspect of our lives. Husbands, you are being good stewards of your time by doing whatever it takes and using your time to ultimately bring glory to God by helping your family, by doing whatever it takes to provide for them, to be the spiritual priest to them, to protect them, and to do all these different things. And ultimately, as good stewards, husbands are called to use their time wisely by laying their lives down for their wives and putting aside all preferences that they have and putting their wife's preferences only second to Christ and putting them before themselves and doing whatever it takes to show them respect and honor in every aspect of their conversations, their actions, and, and their thoughts. And wives demonstrate that they are good stewards of their time by using it to glorify God, whether that be in the workplace, whether that be... Uh oh, at home, or whether that be in the mundane tasks that are taking place throughout the day. Whatever the case, wives are being good stewards of their time by submitting to the authority of their husbands, by showing them respect, loving them, honoring them, and doing whatever it takes to help raise their children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, as is the call of all parents. And for those who are single, they can be good stewards of their time by living for God's glory in every aspect. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe, that because 
singleness causes you to not have conflicted, you know, desires to do the what your wife desires for you to do as, you know, husband and wife are, they can full-heartedly put everything aside and put the Lord and his desires for their lives preeminently. And so because they don't have a wife or a husband, they can do whatever it takes to live for God's glory by by putting his desires ahead of their own desires and the desires of their of their spouse because they're not married. And I think another important aspect of being a good steward of one's time is especially in the workplace. You know, I think a lot of times today they're especially with the internet and having the ability to access whatever you need on your phone when you're at work, you have the tendency to, you know, access that information outside of what you're called to do for your actual work. And so you're abusing the time that, you know, is being granted to you and blessed to you by your your employer. And so you must use your time wisely so that you are honoring not only the Lord, but also the authority that the Lord has put over you, which is your employer. So use your time wisely and use it to God's glory. So if there are any instances when you're at work and you feel as if you're about to do a decision or make a decision that isn't honoring God's call for you to be a good steward of your time, ask yourself, the thing I'm about to do, is it honoring God by being a good steward of my time and being a good steward of my employer's time? And use that as a way to think biblically about being a good steward of not only your time, but also your employer's time. And for those who are students right now, you might be out indefinitely. How can you be good stewards of your time? By, you know, keeping up with studying what you need to learn for school and staying up to date on your homework and all these different things. I'm not sure the specific situations, but also reading God's Word, studying it, meditating on it, memorizing it. Because ultimately, when you study and memorize God's Word, you're being transformed and changed by God's Word. And if God has granted you the gifts of repentance and faith and you are in Christ because you have repented of your sins and trusted in the work of Christ, then that is what's most important in life. And so use your time wisely as a good steward and and live it for God's glory. Another aspect of being a good steward is by using our talents for God's glory. And so a talent, that can be any God-given gift that he's giving you. And so you must use those talents because God has given them to you to live for God's glory. So husbands, if you have a talent for fixing things, use it for God's glory by fixing things in your home, fixing things in your marriage, and fixing things in your children's lives, and especially in the workplace and in your church. Use that gifting to serve others because people who fix things, they are definitely needed today in every aspect of life. So use that gift to help others today. And wives, if you have a gift of organization, have an attention to detail, use that for God's glory. In the workplace, at home, and in raising your children, and ultimately with with serving others, and especially in the church. And children, if you have a talent in any specific area, use it for God's glory. You know, Gloria has so many different talents that she probably doesn't even realize yet, but one of her best ones is eating, just like me. And obviously in the workplace or as a student, if you have a talent, then use it for God's glory by, you know, carrying out your employer's task and and for carrying out the objective of learning something new at school. Do it all to the glory of God and use your talent wisely as a good steward. And ultimately, when we are using the God-given talents that he has given us to be good stewards of and to live for God's glory, and when we employ it to serve others, we are being good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So ultimately, being a good steward also means that we are spreading forth the grace of God in, in what we do. And so be sure to live for God's glory, and especially in the area of using your talents for his, for his kingdom and for his honor and for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And lastly, another aspect of being a good steward is being a good steward of our, t- of our treasures. So being a good steward of our financial resources. So this ultimately means that we don't use our treasures and our resources to damage our families or ourselves and all these different things. So if there's any aspect of your life where you could be using a financial resource to the glory of God instead of for the damage of your own family, then you shouldn't use it for that, but ultimately use it and 
for the spread of the gospel and for the spread of God's kingdom and all these different things rather than using it for something that could be damaging to your family and to your health and all these other aspects. Being a good steward of our treasures means that we are willing to share our possessions with those who are in need and with those who are in the church and especially by giving our gifts to the church. There's nothing in the New Testament that talks about giving a tithe today, but ultimately that God loves a cheerful giver. So we must be cheerfully giving our resources to to advance the kingdom of God and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you're in a church that isn't doing that, then obviously it's not a church, but you need to be giving your resources especially your financial resources, to honor the, the King of glory and to spread the, the message of the gospel to the outermost rim of the earth. So cheerfully give your resources to the mission of the church and especially during this time with coronavirus. You know, you might not be attending church for several weeks. We have no idea what, that, what that's going to look like over the next few weeks and maybe months. But, you know, use your gifts for the glory of God and donate and give your gifts cheerfully to the church. Send them to your pastor. Send them to, you know, if your church has online giving, use that. If your church, you know, doesn't have that, then send, make sure to send your checks to them still because they need to, to still operate if they're going to be used for God's glory. And God isn't in need of your money. But ultimately, something that we need to think about is everything that we've been given in this life, whether time, talent, or treasure, is, is from God. And ultimately, it's not ours. It's something that God gave us. So be sure to have that mindset that everything we have in this life is from God. And so the money that we have, it's not ours. It's God's. The time that we have, it's not ours. It's God's. And the talents that we have, they're not truly ours. They are God's. And so when we live in light of that truth, we can use our resources freely for the glory of God and not selfishly for our own desires because ultimately it's all of God's because he's the one who gives it to us. All right, Gloria, does that make sense? Can I have a high five? Good job. High five up here. Good job. Fist bump. Boom. <laughs> if you found this video to be helpful, be sure to like it and share it with others so that they can learn more about stewardship. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell notification next to the red button so that you'll be notified by email whenever we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us in tangible ways, you can order your SDG merch today by going to the link in the description as well as in the info card. And you can check out our t-shirts, our hoodies, uh-oh, our mugs, our totes, all these different things. So far we have one design, it's the Triple T Word Cloud, and it's all the words that we've talked about from March 2019 to March 2020, which was last week. So get yours today and use it as an opportunity to start a conversation about Christ and to share the gospel with them. And hopefully Gloria and I will have ours soon so that we can show you what they look like on our channel. This is the SDG by ZAC. Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory, with theological terms. Thursday with Gloria. We wish you providential blessings. Take care. We'll catch you next time. You have some boogers? You okay? You wanna? You want one of these? No, no, no. You don't want one? Okay, you can get it. You gonna eat it? You're not gonna eat it? It looks like you're gonna try and eat it. You gonna put one back? This is so intense. Oh, you're gonna put both of them back, okay. Oh my goodness, are you okay? Water. You want some water? No. Oh, it sounded like you said water. Oh my goodness, I was so happy. Yay! Uh oh. Uh oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Well, Gloria's heading off to be a good steward of her time, so make sure that you're a good steward of your time, talent, and treasure. Take care. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.